Well, Detroit Lions fans, mandatory minicamp has opened uh, as of today, June 4th, and will go through June 6th and end on Thursday this week. Uh, hosting three intense workouts for the Detroit Lions players. Uh, should be a very eventful week. A uh, lot of action coming out of Allen Park. As we've already seen today, pretty incredible day for the defense. Uh, the team went through a lot of situational periods today uh, during uh, what was the first mandatory minicamp practice and also a heavy red zone practice style of day. Uh, all offense and defense has got a little bit of work in, but the primary focus is on the veterans, as Dan Campbell has alluded to. Uh, the defense has expressed its will to really want to get more hands-on footballs this season, uh, generate more turnovers, and employ a more aggressive mindset uh, to be able to really shake up offenses this season. Uh, getting after the quarterback is, I mean, numero uno for this defense. That is their number one goal. They want to maintain the pressure. Uh, I'd say that they have already set the tone early with a heck of a day today uh, during round one of minicamp, uh, coming off of a very solid performance uh, over the last couple weeks of OTAs. So kicking things off, we're going to be talking about Jack Campbell, uh, really filling out to be in, uh, a solid linebacker this season already. Had two interceptions off of Jared Goff today, uh, one tipped showing his improved coverage ability and situational awareness during the tip drill. It was not known who tipped the ball, but I'm willing to venture a guess or safely assume anyway it was somebody on the defensive line. Uh, it was apparent that Jack Campbell baited Goff into throwing another interception forcing the ball uh, right where Jack wanted him to throw it uh, to make the play. So, again, we're talking about pajama practice. I get it. It's just shorts, T-shirts, and helmets. Uh, but this really shows a, a high level of heady play from Jack Campbell to, one, trick Goff into throwing a pass that generally Goff would probably feel that that pass is open. Uh, and, and, two, I mean, Goff is very protective of the football. He's done a very good job over the last three seasons of not throwing a ton of interceptions. Uh, and really making good decisions. So if Jack Campbell can trick Jared Goff, uh, I can't wait to see what's in store for, for Jack Campbell this season with oppo opposing quarterbacks. Uh, then we had safety Brandon Joseph. Uh, had a red zone pick off of Jared Goff today, and it should be noted that while Kirby Joseph is still rehabbing a hip injury, Brandon Joseph has stepped in with first-team reps and is making the best of it. Uh, clearly, he had an amazing interception in the red zone today. Uh, showing his ability to make plays with a short field and against one of the best red zone offenses in the league. Uh, Dan Campbell has been impressed with Joseph so far this season, and he had this to say. Uh, there has been noticeable growth from him this last year. Uh, I would tell you, uh, even in the spring, he's improved. He's a young guy that we like a lot. He puts in the work. He's smart. He's crafty. You really see him coming along here. There again, we're not in pads. This is early, but there is growth. We like where he's at right now. Now, uh, to cap off uh, the day today, cornerback Khalil Dorsey uh, had a pick six off of backup quarterback Hendon Hooker. Uh, this is at least the second interception that Hooker has thrown as Stephen Gilmore also picked him off for a pick six during OTAs. To recap a little bit of uh, the second day of OTAs, which was a fairly active day for the secondary as well. Uh, last week, Terrian Arnold had a big moment during team drills when he picked off Jared Goff on a pass intended for Jamison Williams. Uh, Terry and Arnold's confidence, as we have already seen, was on full display, uh, and Jared Goff was excited for him, uh, even dapped him up for his performance during practice. Uh, even Amik Robertson uh, last week nearly had an interception of Jared Goff, uh, which is telling us that all of these DBs seem to have their game face on. They are ready. Uh, they're getting after it. Uh, they're taking every opportunity uh, to make a big play, uh, even with Carlton Davis being held out of practice right now. Uh, unknown reasons. I'm not real sure why if he's, you know, off or uh, you know, rehabbing some sort of, of an injury at this time. Uh, many of you have really expressed concern about the pass rush this offseason or the lack of the pass rush being addressed. Uh, but they, too, have had their moments last week during OTAs as Matthew Betts would have had a sack on Hennon Hooker during team drills had the play been fully live. Now, Hennon Hooker kind of caught the, uh, the heat from Dan Campbell for holding the ball and not throwing it away. Uh, but the competition level, uh, but the competition level was very high all throughout practice, and the defensive unit as a whole would have recorded at least multiple sacks, uh, as they were credited with coverage sacks, which again is exactly why the Lions needed to address the secondary this offseason and during the draft. Coverage sacks are not a bad thing. Uh, forcing a quarterback to hold the ball allows the pass rush to potentially get home more often. Uh, or the QB make a bad throw, a bad decision, have to throw it away. Uh, at any rate, I would take any of those options uh, as a play result, to be honest with you. Uh, they're all better than a positive play for the offense. And 
clearly, uh, a better secondary will lead to more turnovers, which leads to more stops, more offensive scoring, and better game management. Uh, as Hutchinson said uh, this past week, a pass rusher's best friend is a corner that can lock it down. His other best friend is a capable defensive tackle that can create holes, take on double, double teams, and pressure the middle of the offense, which then forces the quarterback to have to go outside. It's not all doom and gloom today for the quarterbacks. Rough day, for sure, uh, for this group. Uh, but this is what we want to see. This is exactly what we want to see from this defense. And if we didn't, I would then be concerned about the, the defense and the emphasis placed on building a better secondary being another failed season attempt. Has it, you know, or would it turn out like it did last season? So far, it's been nothing but exceptional. And the defense is building upon every week and every opportunity in practice. Getting back to today's practice, though, and according to Tim Twentyman, the offense had their moments today as well. Uh, our number one receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown, who has 17 red zone touchdowns during his career, including the playoffs, and uh, a player that has proven to be one of the craftiest in the business near the end zone or the red zone, had back-to-back -to -back touchdown grabs today in team red zone periods. The first one, uh, he saw a soft spot in the middle of the defense, uh, sat down between the defenders and made the play. Uh, Goff found him for an easy score. The second was a boot play where he juked the defender off the line of scrimmage and beat him to the pylon for an easy pitch and catch from Goff. The team also ran a seven-on-seven -seven red zone drill to end practice today with each of the, the three quarterbacks getting two separate sets of four reps apiece. Here's how that kind of finished. Goff was three for eight with two touchdown passes to wide receiver Khalif Raymond. He went 0 for four in the last rep with the first team offense where he threw that last interception to Jack Campbell. Hooker uh, was four of eight with touchdown passes to Raymond, Sion Vaki, Maurice Alexander, and Donovan Peoples-Jones. Love the fact that he's spreading the ball out. Linebacker uh, Malcolm Rodriguez dropped an interception overall. Hooker tended to hold on to the football a bit too long today in red zone drills. And again, uh, he was scathed by Dan Campbell for doing so and taking a sack instead of throwing the ball away. Nate Sudfeld, five of eight today with two touchdown passes to Carden Davis and one to receiver Isaiah Williams. Uh, I'm really excited to see how Williams uh, grows this this season to see if he's somebody that can eke out a spot on this roster come 53-man cut day. Uh, according to Tim, though, he says, don't be surprised if the battle for quarterback two is a little bit tighter than you think, that maybe Hendon Hooker is just not developed as much as they would hope just yet. Uh, that statement not from Tim. That's my statement. Uh, so we'll we'll keep a close eye on this and see, you know, what happens during training camp. Is Hooker going to be able to separate himself? Uh We'll see. Nate Sutfeld clearly knows this offense, but I think Hendon Hooker has the edge here. I really do. I feel like, you know, the fact that his body composition, his strong arm, uh, his quick decision-making, I, I think that Hendon Hooker is going to be able to win the job without a doubt, but we'll see. we got a long summer in front of us. Uh, missing from camp, and to wrap up today's video, some of the bigger names not taking part in practice today, uh, Taylor Decker, Jameer Gibbs, DJ Reader, Terry and Arnold, Kirby Joseph, Marcus Davenport, Brian Branch, and uh, Kirby, or I'm sorry, Gibbs, Joseph, and Davenport were all working with trainers off to the side. So another amazing practice uh, for the secondary today, getting their hands on some balls, coming down with a few interceptions, making some plays in the red zone, and it just has me even more excited uh, for training camp. I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward to finally having a good secondary. This is what we needed, uh, and the Lions are doing it right. So that's all. Go on, probably go Detroit Lions.